Yeah, so we're at the Crescent Hotel. We'll wait a few minutes to see how many other people join. There's the outside. For those that don't know, the Crescent Hotel is in beautiful and historic Eureka Springs, Arkansas. It is billed as the most haunted hotel in America. Well, Kim, that's actually a great question. And unfortunately, I cannot disclose the reason why we are here um, yet. Uh, we were asked by the Crescent to come up uh, and do a special uh, project, uh, but beyond that I can't talk about it yet. But we've wrapped up our project and we have a little bit of free time tonight, so we've got free access basically to, uh, to the hotel. So I think we're going to probably go check out one of my favorite spots, uh, which is, as you might probably easily guess, the morgue. So let's go down there uh, and go check things out. Keep watching uh, America's Most Haunted um, Facebook page for the hotel. Uh, they should be releasing some information about the recent findings at the hotel and probably uh, information about the special project. So we are walking down. Oops, out of focus. There we go. Let's flip this around. Can you see me? And Sherry? Now yeah, let's flip it around. You'd probably rather see. Okay. Let's go down to the morgue and go check things out down there. Kind of nice uh, evening up here in Eureka. It's beautiful weather. it's so dark it's not focusing very well sorry about that it says morgue stop authorized personnel only not sure why there's there we go get a little light on it so let's uh let's go in uh oh Get the key back. So this is the the morgue officially. Um, this is the room where they show a couple of videos and do some um, introduction, basically, to uh, to the um, hotel and the tour. Uh, one of my favorite signs here. Is the original cancer curable hospital sign from Dr. Baker's error. Pretty cool, pretty cool metal, old metal sign. A couple of different uh, posters showing some of the history of the hotel uh, when it was Baker's Cancer Hospital, some information about it. Uh, here's some photos of Norman Baker. Um, as you can see, he was a fairly charming young man, uh, very attractive. And apparently he used his good looks, and that's him later in life, he used his good looks to uh, garner quite a bit of uh, popularity. In fact, at one point, he actually ran for governor um, 
fascinating story if you don't know the the backstory of Norman Baker. He believed that he um, could cure cancer, and he came up with this. Uh, well, he actually purchased the recipe uh, for the cancer cure, which consisted of a, a variety of normal things: um, watermelon seeds, uh, ground up. I can't even remember everything that was in it. Um, carbolic acid, some other things. Um, this is the specimen room, or what we're calling the specimen room. The bottles that are in here, these are all just um, props. These are not uh, the ones that were actually found. This room is famous for, you probably remember, that um, locker. This was in episode 13, I believe, of Ghost Hunters, uh, where Jason and Grant... Uh, were alleged to have seen what they claimed to be a uh, Civil War soldier um, in the thermal imager. Uh oh, just saw an orb fly by. <laughs> Don't anyone go nuts. old wheelchair. And we get into the actual morgue itself, or what was alleged to be the morgue uh, during Baker's tenure at the hospital. So I don't know if you guys remember, or if you had seen, but about three years ago, I uh, did an investigation down here as part of the uh, Eureka Springs Paranormal Weekend. Uh, and as part of that, I did a little bit of, of provoking of Mr. Baker. Um, had a lot of fun with it. And it ended up culminating with me getting a nasty scratch on my back. Uh, part of that was I had kind of an intense interest in finding out what was in that drain that you see there. I think, Kim, you might have actually been there during that, but... Um, Obviously, this is not a uh, autopsy table. Uh, it, it's not the layout is not sufficient for that. It might have been a preparatory table uh, for an autopsy, but a body probably would not have fit on this. Plus, autopsy tables don't generally have sinks built in like that. Um, but it is very likely that this was part of the um, the autopsy. Uh, equipment. We just don't know exactly what this was used for. But back to the drain. So a few years ago, I thought, you know, if this really was an autopsy room and there's a big drain in the center of the room, uh, which generally would indicate that after the bodies were um, dissected and, and analyzed, they would probably wash the floors down to remove the blood, etc., uh, which would then go down to the drainage system, right? So I dug out the drain. Um, I opened up the drain, dug it out like I'm going to try to do again unless it's sealed. Nope, it's still not sealed. Um, with my thought being that if this was a morgue at one time, that there probably would have been pieces of bone or pieces of human tissue that would have uh, been washed down the drain, but as you can see, it is fairly solidly clogged with mud and sawdust, primarily sawdust. Um, it looks like there's some other pieces of stuff in here, um, sticks and things like that, but it dug down, I was able to dig down probably, I don't know, three inches probably right about here uh, and then there's a, a cement cap that's down there so I don't know that this was actually a true drainage um, port uh, not really sure exactly what function that this would have served you know for it to be an 
for it to be a drain for an autopsy room, I would certainly think that it would have to have a larger diameter gauge uh, to allow things to flow down it that might not uh, necessarily go down a normal drain. So, as you can see, it's not very deep. Um, and all the stuff that's in it is just nasty, muddy, dirty stuff. So it's a little disappointing. I was hoping that we would find, you know, something that would prove that this was used as a morgue. Uh, but unfortunately, we, we didn't. Um, but still, still a pretty cool little story. There were a few people in the room at that time when I dug that out originally that kind of freaked out. They were, you know, scared that it was going to release the the demons of the hospital or whatever, but nothing happened. So a little walk around. So this is one of my favorite little areas, too. Um, this is what used to be the cooler. So obviously when bodies were stored for periods of time... They would need some type of refrigerated area where the bodies could be uh, safely. There's a picture of Norman Baker on the inside. Where the bodies could be safely uh, stored uh, to prevent decomposition until they were returned to family members, etc. So, a couple of years ago, uh, we set up an experiment in here during the Eureka Springs Paranormal Weekend where we set up a um, that's really, ugh. all the, look at all the cork insulation material. Anyway, so we set up an experiment in here, um, that was a scrying type experiment, and really interesting. So you go in, you sit down, there was a mirror that's facing, that was on this wall, uh, with a series of, of mirror, or a series of um, candles on either side and really interesting you start after a period of time your eyes kind of get acclimated to it and the the dim light from the candle doesn't illuminate it fully but it illuminates enough that you can kind of see a little bit um, into the mirror uh, and yeah so it was really interesting um, some people reported having out of body experiences from it some people fell asleep um, I happened to see when I did it, uh, I had, I saw just a series of bright, really bright, uh, fluorescent lights that just appeared. You can certainly imagine though, having bodies stored in here. Now I've heard from several people that they would have 20 bodies at a time stacked in here. And I, I find that a little hard to believe, honestly. Um, I can't imagine that they would fit 20 bodies in here unless they literally were stacked one on top of another. Um, but you never know. walk out here for just a minute so this is the laundry facility for the hotel washers and dryers that is a large large drying dryer you can imagine a hotel of this size probably would have to do a significant amount of laundry um, and as you can see it looks like they do
So I really wanted to just kind of show you guys around, not do like a, a true investigation down here. I think we're both pretty exhausted. We may uh, do a little bit down here, but not a whole lot. The last uh, two days we've been kind of running ragged on this uh, special project for the hotel. So I don't know that we want to stay up all night again tonight. Original copy of one of the posters from the hotel. Top the Ozarks. We brought a couple of pieces of equipment. I guess we can just play for a little bit. Um, let's see. So one of the things, so I brought a Avios 5. We can fire that up. See if we get anything down stairs here. Oh, set that up there. Touch. Touch. Mr. Baker, are you down here? What do you want us to touch? Mr. Baker, are you down here? I'm going to turn the flash off. Let's see if we can still see anything down here. Oh. That's kind of dark, but... Let's see. Do we want lights on or lights off? I don't know that it really matters. All right, Mr. Baker, I'm back. Do you remember me from, well, January was the last time I was here. But we, uh, we go way back, don't we? We, uh, We've had some interesting times down here in this morgue. A couple of years ago, you decided that you didn't like uh, what I had said to you, so you decided that you were going to uh, give me a nice little scratch on the back. That's okay. Set this up as well. <sighs> Mr. Baker, if you're here with us, can you show us a sign? Can you do something? Show us that you're around? We would really appreciate it. It's like super quiet down here. It feels like completely different than when we're normally down here on tours and things. I mean, it, it the energy just feels completely, completely different. I honestly don't remember the last time I've been down here just completely alone. Just Sherry and I are the only ones down here. Um, it's a Sunday night, so obviously there's probably not a huge amount of people still in the hotel, but... 
you know, usually you hear noise, there's there's usually some type of activity going on in the hotel, but it just feels totally different right now than it normally does. The energy is just completely different. Last night's a different story. Now, last night, it was packed. The hotel was absolutely jam-packed with people last night, and we went on a couple of the tours last night, and you definitely, there's a, a completely different feeling Um when there's more people in this uh, hotel. Let me turn on the ovulus, or I'm sorry, turn on the poltercom as well. See if we get anything with this, maybe. Whoops. Hang on, I gotta put you guys down for one second. Okay, sorry about that. I had to uh, put the bat back on the battery, the battery pack. Why don't we fire this thing up down here? This is a, a new little gadget that my friend Jeremy uh, created from Paranologies. It's called the Poltercom Progeny, and this is the customized uh, version of the Poltercom that he built me um, a year or so ago. This is the the more miniature version. Hey, Baker, are you down here with us? Is there anyone anyone with us right now? Did you hear that? Can you repeat that? What? What up? Is that one on? The heck was that? One. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Baker, you got our attention down here. You remember me?
pretty quiet down here. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot going on tonight. There's nothing happening with the Poltercom. You know, I've never really had very good luck with any type of um, scanning radio receiver in the Crescent, uh, in the, at least on the lower floors. I suspect it has to do with the amount of metal uh, and stone, so there's probably not very good uh, radio reception down here. The way devices like this work, is that they scan AM or FM uh, radio bands um, sequentially uh, with the thought being that spirits or, or ghosts or whatever you want to call them are somehow able to manipulate um, the uh, scanning to allow words to allow it to fall on words uh, that are kind of specific to the questions um, you know, sometimes you get good results, sometimes you don't. I, I'm generally not that big of a fan of the FM uh, type radio sweep systems uh, for a number of reasons. One, like this, where we are here in the hotel, where there's not very much uh, radio reception, it's it's obviously impossible to get any type of sound out of it. Uh, and then, secondly, uh, there's there's too much of a possibility of audio matrixing, basically. You know what you hear. You kind of your brain tries to pattern match that, and you, you hear something that might not necessarily be what actually was was said, and your brain tries to make sense of it. So if you hear, you know, a word, and you ask the person next to you, "What did you hear?" More than likely, the two of you will probably have heard two completely different things. So not a huge fan of these types of devices. Um, they're cool, but I wouldn't say that they are. Uh, by any means, the be-all, end-all of, of investigative equipment. This thing's really quiet. Um, actually, everything's really quiet. The ovulus isn't really talking. Uh, the, let's see. So this particular device, um, I don't know if you can see that very well, uh, is a... Uh, pretty awesome this was it's a custom design piece of equipment that allows us to basically replace about seven or eight different types of equipment that a paranormal investigator would normally carry around and use uh, into one little handheld touchscreen um, device and uh, so it measures temperature uh, barometric pressure AC milligauss which is kinda cool um, so that'll tell you man-made uh, electricity EMF milligauss, which would be DC, uh, ELF and VLF energy, which is natural energy, um, not man-made. Um, it has an audio recorder built in, so it can record like uh, e EVPs. Uh, it also has a really cool feature, which I've not seen on any other device, uh, that will actually track power drain. So if you've ever done any type of investigation, you've probably at one point heard that someone say hey my batteries are drained uh, or if you're carrying a camera around you're taking photos uh, with a freshly charged battery all of a sudden your camera just dies so this particular device has um, the algorithm is designed to monitor the battery that's in the device uh, so it actually tracks battery drain above what would be considered normal um, battery drain so 
if someone with is with you and they suddenly start losing battery power, uh, you can refer to that device and it'll tell you if it's a natural phenomena that might be causing that or if maybe the, there's a bad cell or something in the person's battery that might have caused it. The other interesting little toy that I brought tonight down here, this is not even a, this is just a small, small portion of the equipment that uh, we use on paranormal investigations, but I also brought this. Um, so this is a black light. Um, you've probably seen this talked about or you've probably used it at some point, um, but it is designed to pick up primarily, uh, it will fluoresce for um, biologic material. So blood, urine, um, saliva, uh, using this thing shows up pretty bright. Um, it fluoresces. So this, this is something that you would definitely use or probably not want to use, I should say, if you were any type of a germaphobe uh, and you go to a hotel room and you think the hotel room has been cleaned, your, your linens and sheets were clean, uh, this thing will show you that it is probably not. Um, you will see all kinds of splatters and weird um, fluid residue, uh, to be as politically correct as possible. Except at the Crescent. Um, scattered all over the place, yes, except at the Crescent. I have to throw that in. So here he's checking things out with the thermal imager. There's really nothing going on. Literally, this place is dead tonight. I mean, there is nothing. Oh, no, no, no. oh I say that, but... Hey, Baker, is that you? Can you, can you move that Keep more going. to the right? Keep going. Light it up. Show us that you're here. Come on. Keep going. If you walk by it, you can turn it green. That way we know you're here with us. Oh, oh there it is. Thank you. Skip. Hey, so Baker, is that me? Are you here now? Can you let? Yeah, it was only halfway. Can you light it up again? Can you walk by it or touch it? Tell people how that works. Hmm? Tell people how that works. So that is. So it's it's. Kind of an interesting little device. Again, this is designed by my friend Jeremy Jones from uh, Paranologies, and it is a, a triboelectric field detector. Basically, it's it's a it's a fancy static and EMF meter, um, and it is kind of similar to a standalone um, EMF type device. And it, if there is any type of static energy that goes near it. Uh, it lights up sequentially in uh, strength. So we've used it very successfully on a variety of investigations as kind of a a digital Ouija board of sorts um, to answer yes-no type questions, to um, show that there's some type of energy or spirit that's in the uh, room with us, etc. Yeah, Dan, you could be right. It may not be Baker. It could be someone else for sure. You know, that's you generally, a lot of people automatically assume... Uh, that Baker is somehow attached to the morgue down here, but you know you make a really good point, and that's absolutely true. So Baker was not an actual doctor; he called himself a doctor, um, but he was not a doctor. Um, so he employed doctors that worked for him. So to my mind, there probably would not have been a really good reason for him to be down here in the morgue, being that he was not a practicing physician or a doctor. He didn't have uh, the medical training, he, he really would have had no need to be down here. So it's just kind of, you know, through the years, urban legends, how they kind of grow and kind of take on their own uh, life to an extent. You know, I, th I think to a large extent that probably has happened uh, here at the Crescent um, with, the, uh, with the morgue. Um, I don't know that he really would have been very um, attached to down here. Tim, yeah, that's a great question. So I've I've been to the Pythian Castle in Springfield. We checked it out uh, several years ago. Um, it's a really cool place. Um, I'd love to come back at some point, but don't know. I don't know when. 
Had some really interesting things happen there, too, when we investigated it. I'm not even sure if it's the same owner uh, or not, uh, but she was she was very open to having uh, paranormal investigators come out to it. So, yeah, I'd certainly... I'd certainly come back if she was still amenable to that. Well, guys, there's not a lot going on down here. I don't want to just keep on pushing if nothing's going to happen tonight. It literally is dead. Maybe we wore them out this weekend. Yeah, it could be. There was quite a bit of activity we had last night. Um, and again, being that there's so few people in the hotel tonight... You know, maybe that's uh, part of the reason. But you know, that's interesting. You always think, or you always hear as paranormal investigators that the best results usually are, are received when there's fewer people. Um, so when you have a large group of people, you generally don't have uh, as much success as you would in, in a small group environment. But I don't know, tonight doesn't seem... Uh, doesn't seem to follow that there's really nothing going on and like i said originally the the energy in this place tonight feels completely different it feels much more um bare i guess i i don't even know how to describe it it just it feels more sterile uh down here than usual like kim i know you've been down here a few times um you know that feeling that you get it's you know that tightness in your chest that that um, apprehension, I don't want to say fear, because I don't really consider it fear, but um, just that feeling you get normally when you're down here in this morgue, it's just a very heavy, thick feeling. I mean, the air feels thick, but tonight it doesn't feel like that at all. It feels very, like I said, very sterile tonight, like nothing, there's nothing down here. Cirillo, what happened there where where we're at now, so this is the this is the um, the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and this was a man by the name of of Norman Baker um, scammed a whole lot of people uh, back in the 30s um, by saying by opening this as a cancer hospital and saying that he could cure people's cancer using a a combination of a variety of uh, well known things. Um, ground up watermelon seeds and and um carbolic acid and some other things more people died than were cured from his from his uh supposed elixir um i don't have the exact number of folks that are that uh died here in this facility but i understand it to be fairly significant people came from all over the world uh to this place um because baker claimed that he can cure anyone with cancer without surgery, that he had this, this magic elixir number five is what he called it, uh, and this special um, potion he could uh, inject it into the cancer site uh, and, and cure you of all of your, your cancer. So a lot of people died down here um, at this hospital, and that the area that we're in now is the morgue, or what was known to be the morgue, or what was thought to be the morgue, I should say. Like I showed earlier, this is the this is the cooler, the body cooler. And they had said at one point that there was uh, about 20 people that were stacked in here at a time. It's pretty creepy. It definitely is a cooler. Um, it could be argued what, whether this was actually used as a as an actual body storage place or not. I mean, yeah, Deanna, you're absolutely right. Usually there is a very, very thick heaviness that's down here, but it's not here tonight. Tonight is completely um, void of that. And again, it could just be because there's no one in the hotel. The hotel is basically empty tonight, or it could be that um, the ghosts or spirits are taking a little break tonight.
You see anything? No, but it shut off twice. As you can probably see or not hear, um, there's nothing going on with the ovulus, with the, some of the EMF meters. Um, there's just nothing going on down here tonight. It's a cool place, but unfortunately not very exciting tonight. But that is kind of par for the course. Sometimes it's super, super active. Sometimes it's not. I mean, that's kind of the, the frustrating thing about paranormal investigating. You know, sometimes you go places and it's super, super active and you get lots of activity and lots of things happen. And then there's sometimes where there's hours and hours and hours where nothing happens at all and it's completely um, boring. You don't see that on the TV shows, though. I mean, obviously the... The shows pack as much as they can into 30 minutes or an hour episode, um, so you don't actually get to see the hours and hours and hours of sitting around that where nothing does happen. And this happens to be one of those uh, one of those cases where nothing's happening. It's just very, very, pardon the pun, dead tonight. This is some sort of medical thing. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Relax a sizer. I don't know if that's original to his time or not. I would say probably not. What? Oh. Baker, is that you? Oh, shut off really fast. So it probably is not. Is your name Walter by any chance? There's a backstory with with Walter, and I can't explain it completely now, but it has to do with the the project, the reason why we're here. Walter is a name that was coming up uh, several times uh, throughout the weekend during our investigation. Walter, are you here with us? Kind of hit or miss tonight. Well, I think we may go move to another area of the hotel. Um, I was hoping that things would be kicking down here, but it certainly does not appear that way tonight. So... Keep an eye out. We may uh, live stream from another location, but we appreciate you watching, and we will see you guys soon. Have a good night.